Sometimes after a long morning in the shop, I like to take my lunch outside just to enjoy the nice summer breeze. The downside to this is the ground is really hard, sometimes muddy, and the neighborhood kids are really mean. Get a table, loser! I'm pretty sure that second one was hard-boiled. I vowed that day to never be made fun of again for eating my lunch in the grass. Now Mike from a year ago, at one point, thought building a dining room table out of construction lumber was probably going to be a good idea, and he bought a bunch of these 2x6s. Thankfully I came to my senses, but now I have a new project for them. We're going to start off this project by making templates for the table and bench legs. Normally I would use a piece of wood for this, but I didn't have one big enough. Paper works, but it's just not as convenient as a piece of wood is. So I'll show you the paper here, and then we'll get to the wood on the smaller ones. The templates are cut to the exact dimensions that your finished legs will be. The first step is to lay your piece of wood across the template from corner to corner, and then using a straight edge, mark out exactly where the paper crosses the 2x4. After everything's marked out, we will transfer these angles over to the miter saw and cut them out. I believe this one turned out to be 28 degrees. Once everything is cut out, bring it back to the template to make sure it fits perfectly, and then trace the outline of the wood on the paper. Use the same technique using the opposite corners and another piece of wood to find out the angles for the other leg. Then, just like before, bring the other leg over to the template, line everything up to make sure it's perfect, and trace the outline on the template. We're going to be using lap joints for the legs. So, by tracing the legs out on the paper, we can get the intersection from where they cross over. Using a straight edge and a razor, we just cut out the middle of the template. So by using the template to trace out the hole using the top side for one leg, and the bottom side for the other leg, you'll have perfect markings for where your lap joints need to go and on which side they need to be. To find the depth of the lap joints, we just need to find the exact thickness of our wood, divide by two, and then transfer that measurement over to the table saw. I set my miter gauge to match the angle of the lines we marked out and began chopping out the lap joint. I could have installed my dado stack, this process would have gone much faster, but our friends in Europe don't get to use them, so I thought I'd show you this way. Alright, I'll be honest, I didn't put them in because I'm lazy. Once all the materials removed and cleaned up with a chisel, they should fit together perfectly. Now we need to repeat all these processes again for the bench legs. Thankfully I had a small piece of quarter inch plywood so I can show you the other, easier and more repeatable process of using a wood template. You line up the wood on the corners just as you did with the paper one, but this time we can clamp it into place. Then by flipping the template over, I can just trace the plywood outline exactly where it meets the wood. Back over to the miter saw to cut out the angles we just found. And then, just as we did before, we line up our wood on top of the template to make sure it fits, and trace out the outline. Cut out the second leg, repeat the process, so we have our intersection of where the two 2x4s two will meet. The only difference this time is a straight edge and a razor just isn't going to work. I drilled out a couple holes to get the jigsaw started, and then cut out the middle of the template. The bonus to using a wood template is, if you're going to turn these out for profit, you never have to do the whole measuring thing again. You set the templates aside and use them every time you need to make one of these benches. This should greatly speed up the production of your brand new picnic table business. I'm just in this to make one table, so using a paper template for the first one wasn't going to kill me. Once all the legs are marked out, just as they did before, making sure to flip the template so you cut on the opposite sides, you should come up with four sets of legs. And just like we did on the table legs, we're going to transfer the angle over to the miter gauge on the table saw 
and hog out all the material on each of the eight pieces of legs. Depending on how well you did and what kind of blade you have installed in your table saw, you may have to come back with a chisel and clean things up a little bit to get them to fit nicely. To create the braces that we're going to use to attach the legs to the table, all you need to do is take your X and place it on another piece of 2x4. Then use your pencil to trace out where the X lays across the 2x4. This will give us a perfectly flush brace that you won't even see. You may be noticing a pattern here, but the next step is to take those angles, transfer them to the miter saw, and cut out the braces. For the table top, we need to have a quarter inch spacing between the boards for water drainage and wood movement. If you're like me and you have a bunch of wood shims laying around, the thick end of the shim is exactly one quarter inch. So just jam a shim in between each board and then put a little clamping pressure on it so that everything evens up. After marking out the screw locations, I brought the braces over to my drill press. I needed some inch and a quarter holes so that the screws will reach through the braces into the tabletop. Using my clamp to hold the brace in place, I used some three and a half inch deck screws to secure the brace into the tabletop. This ensures that the screws will not pop through the front and we will have no exposed hardware holding the thing together. I then repeated the process for the other side. I then took the table legs and clamped them to the braces, making sure the ends were flush. I pre-drilled some holes and then drove some stainless steel leg bolts through, making sure to have washers on both sides. Secured them all in place with some locking nuts. And I toenailed in a couple two and a half inch deck screws into the legs just to be sure. I cut out a few angled pieces and secured those to the legs with some leg screws and washers to keep everything square. Now you don't need to use a track saw for this step, but I just bought it. When you spend that much money on a saw, you find a reason to use it. So I used my track saw to trim the edges up. Finally, we are on to the benches. They are going to go together just like the tabletop did. One of the main differences here is that they're spaced a half inch apart, which means I now take two shims and jam them in between each board. The braces were cut out just the same way the table was. I marked the locations, pre-drilled all the holes, and secured them to the bench top. Again, I pre-drilled the holes for the leg bolts, completely forgetting to use a backer block and causing tear out on the legs. Thankfully, the washers I used on the bolts cover all that up. Then again, I secured everything in place with some lock nuts. Angled braces were again cut out, toenailed into the bench top, and then finally secured to the legs using a leg screw with a washer. Now, none of this lumber is pressure treated. One, because that's what I didn't have on hand, and two, I just hate using it, which means I need to spend a lot more money on finish, which is why I went with Epiphanes. It is an awesome exterior marine grade varnish but man is it a pain in the butt to apply. It is going to take about 8 coats of this. Each coat needs about 24 hours to dry. And the first couple coats need to be thinned out with mineral spirits. I use the old painter's tape trick to try to keep the epiphanes from dribbling everywhere when I pour it into the container. And for the first coat, it was a 50-50 mix of epiphanes and mineral spirits. Then using a technique I perfected on Sushi Night, I stirred everything together. I don't know how many of you have gotten the luxury of finishing a picnic table in your basement between a wall and a toilet stack, but I can guarantee you that it is exactly as much fun as it sounds. You may have noticed it doesn't look so much like pine anymore, and that's because off camera I sanded for hours and then finished everything up with a cherry danish oil. I hate the look of blonde pine, but with a little cherry danish oil everything becomes a little bit more fancy. So I did this for eight days in a row. I could not wait to get this picnic table out of my shop. With the help of my wife, I was finally able to drag this picnic bench outside. Make sure you measure before you build something in your basement. I almost had to dismantle it just to get it into the backyard. Now I can finally enjoy my peanut butter and jelly sandwich in peace. And the neighborhood kids will have nothing to say about it. Nice table, loser. He's right. It is a nice table. If you'd like free plans to build this table, just visit my website listed below. 
use the coupon code EGGTABLE, all capitals, at checkout to get the free plans. Thanks for watching. If you think I did a good job, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. I have plenty of more plans and videos, and you can find me on all the social media sites listed here. But thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.